sort of a timeline question um, because you both have, have pursued this through different paths and approaches, but uh, if somebody is sort of sitting on the decision start line and decides we are indeed going to pursue this and they're thinking about the economics of sustaining the business through all of these certification processes and inspections and everything, um, what have you found people should be planning for in terms of timeline and resources and I mean just keeping your employees motivated through all this can sometimes be very difficult right so what have you found the the timeline's been like um, Fleeta I know you're still waiting on a couple of things for some markets so uh, maybe the timeline's not done yet but what um, what have you been looking at from a timing perspective yeah, so I guess the timelines never end when you're exporting. But um, uh, just to be, just to go back a step, we when we came into the market, we partnered with a third party manufacturer who already had a narcotic license, so it was already a GMP um, or TGA in, you know, for the TGA in Australia. So we were very fortunate. It was much easier for them to um, simply obtain a medicinal cannabis addition to their narcotic license. So we we partnered very well. It was probably one of our best decisions because it was the one of the reasons why we were first to market uh, because it was already in place. It was very simple. We learned a lot from our manufacturer um, and we had we started to implement our own systems and processes over the last three years uh, as well as have our own staff in there. So we really embedded our own um, systems, culture, equipment, and everything in there. So even though we used his license and we were sort of guided by um, this manufacturer, it was it was us well and truly. And so he helped us as well, uh, or to give us the mindset so that when we started to construct our own and do our own process, that we were you know really ready to do so. But nothing could have prepared us me and the rest of the team for the shift in mindset that was required when we decided to do our own GMP facility. Like, oh my gosh, you know, you talk about timelines and it's one thing to actually, you know, head down and do all these 180, I think, documents that we had, each of about 100 pages in length. Um, you know, these are operating procedures as well as quality manuals that they're not to sit there and get dust on you. You have to embed this into your culture, into your everyday activity. You know, our language changed. We can't say non-GMP anymore. We, you know, our facility is GMP and it's either ISO or, or um, non-ISO GMP, you know. So our language had to change within the company. We had to have GMP training, you know, where we had authorities and regulators come in and assist with that. Um, we had to hire people of the highest caliber who understood, you know, the PICS guidelines um, and, the, you know, which is what the European guidelines are set on um, so that we could, you know, get the right documentation together. And we're going through the inspection and audit process now. Um, so later this year, we're hoping to have that internal license as well. Um, but in the meantime, we're certainly, it's business as usual with our, with our manufacturing partner. Um, so the timelines look, yeah, I mean, for us, it was, it's been going for two or three years, but really seriously, probably, um, I'd say eight, eight months. Yeah, for, for, for us and yeah, DFAC yeah, would have yeah. a different timeline there. Yeah, I mean, so from our perspective uh, on the distribution side, we, you know, timelines didn't matter as much because we, we got into Germany through an acquisition. So we, we have a GDP and a narcotics license through uh, an acquisition that we made in, in that market. And there's, uh, you know, there's plenty of distributors uh, in, the, in the market there. Um, with respect to the manufacturing side on EU GMP, yeah, it's been, it's been well over a year and not, you know, not even including the pandemic, right? Um, and so when you throw a pandemic into trying to plan for EU GMP, everything goes berserk. And this is being inside Europe, leave alone being outside Europe is a whole other challenge. Uh, so, you know, whether it means getting regulators from Europe to come out and inspect you is impossible at this point. And for those of us in Europe, it's if you're building a facility inside of Europe, which we're doing, it's are you going to be able to get the labor and the and the equipment and the materials in because you're depending on a lot of external factors like China. So, uh, you know, the pandemic certainly has impacted some of those timelines. Uh, I would say, you know, a year to a year and a half is, is not off the, you know, is not off the track in terms of how long you should estimate 
the timing to be. And, and again, you know, hoping that there's no second wave of the pandemic, you know, hoping that you're able to get regulators out. So there's a number of uh, those sorts of things that are up in the air at this point, but year to year and a half is certainly realistic. Our multi facility uh, from the time that we started to the time that we anticipate getting licensed will be about a year, year and a half timeline. So that's what I would put out there.